if you look at Japan from the outside, you'll see this robot advanced tech, basically zero crime, incredible culture, the third biggest economy in the world, a healthy population, and companies that are famous all over the world. In many ways, an ideal country. But if you look closer, under the surface, you'll see that while all of that is true, there is another much darker side to life in Japan. Unbeknownst to most of the world, Japan has millions of people who have failed to succeed in society and ended up completely isolated from it, without access to jobs, marriages, and means to live a normal and happy life. They are known as the lost generation, and they make up almost 15% of the population of the country. Their sad story is a symbol of Japan's fall from grace and a sign of its disturbing future. This is the dark side of Japan, the lost generation. While this is now mostly forgotten, in the 1980s, Japan was seen as the next economic superpower that was going to replace the United States and completely take over the global economy in a similar way we might see China today. It seemed so certain that there was serious anxiety about Japan in the US, with articles like this one talking about an economic Pearl Harbor and how Japan was going to buy the entire United States. Movies like Die Hard, Rising Sun and Blade Runner all featured the trope of Japanese corporations taking over America and the world. This anxiety was the result of the Japanese miracle. Three decades of enormous consecutive economic growth made possible by the unique Japanese economic system that was at the time seen as superior to the Western model. Basically, it was based on cooperation between gigantic corporate cartels and the Japanese government. These cartels, called Keiretsu, were alliances of the biggest Japanese corporations owning shares in each other and, while formally independent, working together to back each other up. The biggest Keiretsu were given unfair support from the government in the form of enormous loans distributed by the state-owned National Bank of Japan. This basically meant that these alliances had access to an infinite stream of cash to finance their aggressive expansion abroad, while at the same time, the government would block foreign companies from expanding into the Japanese market. It wasn't a healthy system or a fair one, but it was working. The Japanese stock market was booming. Japanese products were conquering one market after another, and regular people knew that if they worked hard and got a university degree, they would get a solid job at a large corporation that would mean the guarantee of lifetime employment. Japan was unstoppable and everything was going great. Until it wasn't. By 1991, Japan had been growing extremely fast for three consecutive decades and had become the second biggest economy after the United States. As the economy was growing, prices of real estate and values of companies listed on the stock market were growing as well. But by the end of the 1980s, this growth went into overdrive and turned into a speculative mania. Basically, everyone thought that the economic boom and the growth of assets would continue forever and that the more you invest, the more money you would make. Meanwhile, the National Bank of Japan continued to print out and lend money to basically anyone who asked, regardless of what the money was for or how trustworthy the creditors were. Then one day, the bubble popped. Throughout the year 1990, the stock market fell by 43% and real estate prices followed. The bursting of the bubble meant that regular people had much less money to spend and that no one was willing to invest in Japanese companies anymore, leading to an end of the economic boom. On top of that, in the years after the burst of the bubble, cracks in the Japanese system quickly began to show. It was revealed that corruption was widespread and common in Japanese business and government, from insider trading to stock manipulation, fraud and bribery. The practically unlimited supply of loans created hundreds of zombie companies, businesses that would have gone bankrupt years ago but kept surviving on a never-ending supply of cheap money borrowed from the state. The point is that when the economic bubble burst and the economic boom ended, this ritual was broken. While during the boom it was not that hard to get at least some corporate job, after 1990, most companies froze their hiring entirely for almost the entire decade. 
they were not hiring any graduates at all in order to keep all of their lifelong employees during the economic crisis. They eventually resumed their hiring in the new century, although finding a job has become much harder ever since. But for a whole generation of people who graduated in the 1990s, it was too late. They were not graduates anymore by then, and so the companies would not hire them as they were hiring fresh graduates instead. Those people whose only fault was being born at the wrong time missed their shot and fell through the cracks of the system. An entire generation, millions of people were left behind, destined to spend the rest of their lives on temporary part-time low-paid jobs. This period became known as the Employment Ice Age, and people who graduated during that time are known as the Lost Generation. Since the Japanese economy never fully recovered, more young people graduating in the 2000s and then the 2010s joined their ranks, and the period of the last 30 years became collectively known as the Lost Decades. This is obviously tragic for those who are part of the Lost Generation, but it doesn't affect just them. Instead, their sad fate negatively affects the entire Japanese society, and it casts a dark shadow over Japan's future. There is an entire generation of people now in their 30s and 40s who are missing from the job market entirely. They usually live with, and often off, their parents. They were never economically secure enough to start families of their own, and they, they never had proper jobs and careers. Around 15% of the population, almost 17 million people, are considered part of the lost generation. They make up the age group that's the most important for the economy of any country. It's the people in their 30s and 40s who usually spend the most on their families, housing, taking mortgages and buying cars. They are those who keep the economic engine going, but in Japan there's no one to do that now. The economy is not Japan's only problem that's getting worse because of the lost generation. Currently, the country is dealing with what's been called super-aging. Japan has the highest percentage of elderly people, almost 30% of the population in the world, and it's aging more rapidly than any other country. That is partly also because of the millions of children that the lost generation never had. By 2050, the ratio between seniors and people of working age will be 1 to 1.3, meaning that there will be almost as many people over 65 as people between 15 and 64. In any country in the world, the elderly are dependent on the taxes paid by people in what's called productive age, but in Japan, this will, at some point, simply no longer be sustainable. On top of that, the lost generation created another social issue that is becoming increasingly damaging to the survival of Japanese society, the phenomenon of so-called hikikomori. These are Japanese men who have voluntarily decided to completely cut themselves off from society, spending their lives in complete isolation, never leaving their house and not having any social contacts at all. They are usually completely financially dependent on their parents. The first hikikomori were members of the original lost generation, men today in their 30s and 40s who could not fulfill the requirements expected from them by Japanese society, get a job, climb the career ladder, start a family and provide for them, and decided to give up entirely instead. Eventually they were joined by others from the younger generations as well, who, although they did have a chance to join the job market, just found it too stressful and competitive. Today there are almost one million of these men in Japanese society with many more on the verge of joining them. This social phenomenon is quickly becoming a very real mainstream problem affecting the entire society. The Japanese government is aware of the extremely negative impacts that the existence of the lost generation and the growing number of hikikomori are having on Japanese society and the economy. It has announced that it will try to help the lost generation get back on its feet and reintegrate those who secluded themselves from society, but so far it has had very little success. The problem is that the Japanese economy is still not doing great, and at the same time, it still has an extremely rigid work culture. Not only are people expected to work extremely long hours and comply with strict hierarchy, but many companies still follow the same pattern of lifelong employment, hiring only once a year and promoting only from within the company. 
This makes it impossible for employees to take breaks or even to get a second chance if they fail to get their foot in the door. As a result, millions of people are stuck and their numbers are constantly growing as more young people fail to succeed in the ruthless system and eventually just give up.